difficult question to answer because uh, the origins go back to before uh, ophthalmology actually started. So before uh, I chose ophthalmology as a subspecialty, uh, I always wanted to be a general surgeon. And uh, after general surgery, I wanted to uh, actually be out there in the ER, uh, maybe cutting open abdomens, uh, maybe uh, cutting open uh, the thorax, saving lives and getting getting my hands bloody. And that's what I uh, wanted to be as a doctor. But uh, uh, I missed out on getting a general surgery seat in my counseling. And uh, then ophthalmology was another choice. And I uh, settled in ophthalmology with the thought process that uh, once I finish ophthalmology, then probably uh, I would uh, choose a field that probably would mirror surgery. And so when I finished uh, my MS and I, it was time to uh, look for a fellowship, I chose oculoplasty as my first choice. But interestingly, uh, at the time that I had my fellowship interview, a uh, seat in oculoplasty was not available at uh, Louis Prasada Institute, which was the choice of the place that I wanted to train in. Uh, and the second choice for me was cornea. So interestingly, though I wanted to start off with uh, being in a specialty that uh, would be very bloody, I ended up in a specialty that had uh, absolutely no blood. So uh, I don't know if you can call that a love marriage, it probably was arranged, but it certainly was my second choice. and. Uh, not a choice uh, that came uh, down the table. Well, it's very simple. The drive and your, uh, when you strive to achieve perfection, I think uh, you will find that cornea is your most natural specialty. Uh, when you're a coronal surgeon, you get to do cataract surgeries, you do refractive surgeries, you do a lot of coronal transplants and you take care of a lot of patients. So in refractive surgery and cataract surgery, the uh, buzzword is perfection. You have to be accurate, you have to be perfect and you have to be repeatable. Now if you bring that learning into cornea and apply the same principles of being accurate and of being predictable in your coronal transplants, in your d surgery, your DALs, your DMEX, as well as your pediatric keratoplasties and your other keratoplasties that you do, I mean, that is when you start to reach the pinnacle of satisfaction and success in corneal diseases. Even infections and even disorders where you want to make sure that the patient gets away with the minimum amount of impact on vision, is probably what will drive you as a coronal surgeon. And also remember that the results of whatever you do to the cornea are out there for everyone to see. For a coronal surgeon, whatever you do is out there for the patient as well as for your colleagues, as well as for your students to look and see and learn. So that is the challenge that actually keeps you going. And the challenge to achieve that perfection every single time that you actually operate or take care of a patient is what keeps me going. Thanks for saying that, but uh, again, if you have to identify a trait within yourself, uh, it probably is, uh, is, it might not be very accurate and it's better for somebody else to identify that trait in you. But at least uh, from my perspective, uh, I think the reason why I keep the interest high and also keep the, uh, the thirst for knowledge high is the realization that we hardly know anything in this area, especially in the area of cornea. There is so much to know, there is so much to learn. And the only way you can actually do that is to have an open mind and try and learn from everyone, your peers, your seniors, your patients, and even your trainees. Your trainees actually and the fellows are a fantastic source of learning because it's the questions that come from the fellows that actually goad you and encourage you to find out more and be on your toes as well. Initially, I was the junior most member of the faculty and uh, uh, the job that I got to do was the one that was available. So I started to do a lot of research and I worked on the confocal microscope 
for several months, six months or so, that's the only thing I did. Uh, and then uh, one of the faculty members who used to work in the area of contact lenses left uh, the hospital, so I was asked to take up contact lenses and, and I did that. And uh, I started uh, the, to put the ICLEP program back on track. And then a uh, year later, another of the Cornea faculty members who used to take care of pediatric ophthalmology also left the hospital. And so I was uh, asked to take care of that as well. So it was a natural choice and I started taking care of uh, pediatric coronal disorders and contact lenses as my first two areas of interest. And I used to love doing that because I used to enjoy doing everything in cornea. Uh, but then soon thereafter, one of the faculty members who used to do refractive surgery primarily at LBP, he left the institute as well. So I got uh, sidetracked into refractive surgery. So now I was doing uh, general cornea, contact lenses, uh, refractive surgery and keratoconus, and uh, pediatric coronal disease. And I was very happy because I enjoyed doing all of this. The only thing that I probably did not get to do was uh, ocular surface, and that's something that I still don't do too much of nowadays. But what happened at the time that I was uh, uh, going to choose a specialization or a fellowship, I had to choose one of these areas because I couldn't do a fellowship in all of these areas. And so I picked uh, lamellar coronal surgery and uh, refractive surgery as my area. So it was extremely difficult to let go of my pediatric cornea practice and also the uh, children that I had uh, transplanted and I had followed up for so many years. So that probably was one of the toughest choices that I had to make in the field of cornea health. Second choice uh, or a second chance, I would uh, I would pick cornea every single time. I would not uh, deviate from that choice, and I and I uh, would go back on my word and say that uh, oculoplasty would not be my first choice, but cornea would. Uh, for the experience that it has given me, for the things that it has taught me, for the things that it has allowed me to experience, to do and experience, uh, I think cornea has been probably a game changer for me. But the one thing that probably keeps me going as well and the one thing that you should think of as a choice is to be able to pass on the knowledge that you gain in your specialty and fellowship to people who come after you. And the ability and also having the power to change and also educate and teach the next generation I think is one of the most important powers or abilities that you can have as an educator, as an ophthalmologist, and as a cornea specialist again. And I don't think any other specialty affords you the length and the breadth of the potential for education. Cataract, refractive surgery, coronal transplantation, ocular surface, microbial keratitis, pediatric keratitic keratoplasty. The breadth is so amazing that you have so many choices to make after you finish your cornea fellowship as well. So do take cornea and continue to be satisfied and continue to teach the next generation as well.